We're recording. All right, so one last announcement for people here and online. Um, both members of Patterson Church and Lordly St. Matthew's Church should have got or be about to get a letter from the clerk of presbytery. Um, I know for at least one person, it's gone to their junk mailbox in their email. And uh, they were sent out, but I don't know if they've arrived yet, if you're going to get them by mail. Um, but it's a letter uh, asking for feedback on the arrangement between Patterson and Morley St. Matthews. Uh, we were supposed to have everything figured out about our future together with a deadline of July 16th. But something weird happened in the spring, I forget what it was, um, that, that we were not able to have any of the joint services or events together that we had planned. The presbytery unilaterally just said, we're extending the contract until the end of the year, but both ch uh, churches are supposed to be able to give feedback. So if you, watching this online, are a member of either congregation, uh, or you're here today, uh, if you haven't got a letter, uh, if it's coming in the mail, you might not have received it yet, but it was sent. If you are on the church's email list and haven't got it, check your junk mail. And please uh, do uh, give any feedback. Uh, there's a presentry committee. They met with uh, both sessions and with me over the last couple of days. And uh, it's a good thing. It's not bad that presentry is coming in and talking. This is that we're in trouble. Uh, the only tricky thing is how late this is, right? The timing is tricky, but it's very good we're getting outside help and input. So please look for that letter. Um, those are the announcements, except for the one that's always the same and always most important. God loves you, and we have the amazing privilege of being able to worship. Let's just stop for a moment and gather our hearts and minds. Our call to worship will be, uh, for Advent, will be shared across the country in Presbyterian churches. Let's join together in our Advent liturgy. The season of Advent begins, and we celebrate the hope we find in the good news of the gospel. Through the birth of a tiny and helpless child, God comes to save the world. While we watch and wait for Jesus, we join God's mission by bringing grace and mercy to those who need it most. We engage the poor and the poor in spirit, letting Christ's light shine through us. We speak words of comfort and love to a world in need of hope and healing, and we share our stories of God's transforming spirit. Together we are a sign of God's hope for the world. Let us pray. God of surprising grace, when you least expect it, you bring fresh new life. And where we feel that all is lost, you bring redemption. Amen. We light the candle of hope. to uh, sing only in our hearts. If you want to put on your mask and mumble to yourself, that is acceptable as well. Our first hymn uh, is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let's worship God together. <laughs>
In this season of Advent, we look forward to the coming of Christ. We can also know that he's already with us. And so we can pray to a God who is already here. Let's join together in prayer. Lord God, we pray to you that you will come to us. Emmanuel, God with us. Holy Spirit, Father, creator of the world. But we ask you to come knowing that you already have, that you've already promised your Holy Spirit and you keep your promises, that you promised Jesus where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there too. And so we pray as we gather, um, we pray as we listen for your word, as we sing, as we pray, that you'll give us eyes to see you in creation and in one another, ears to hear you um, as we read your scriptures and as we listen for your wisdom in the world. We pray that you'll give us hearts and minds that burn with excitement and souls that are ready to greet you. Open our eyes and ears and hearts and minds. Open our souls to you, we offer ourselves. You have given yourself as a gift. And we come to do the same in worship. As we come knowing you're here, as we come to offer ourselves, we also need to come confessing, Lord. Because we have held ourselves back. Sometimes ignorantly and sometimes intentionally. We have pretended that you are not there. We have lived as atheists, lived as people that are against you. We've been selfish and cruel, and we are sorry. We come confessing, Lord, but we come confessing with hope, not in ourselves, but in your grace. Come, O oh come, God with us, and make us new. Come, O oh come, and pour your Holy Spirit of new life into us once more, that we can be your people, that we can love with your love. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And now together we share the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel. Christ has come to set you free. Christ has come to give you hope. Receive this gift and live in his love. Amen. We have been blessed, and that makes us a blessing to one another and to our world. And actually, let's ignore what that says. This week, please bless each other with the words, the hope of Christ be with you. I don't know if there's a hand gesture that means hope. <laughs> this is a peace sign. It works. It is our gift as God's free and forgiven people to be able to share his word. Um, our first reading, uh, actually through the season of Advent, our first reading is going to be uh, not a song, but the poetry of the prophet Isaiah as we too look for the coming of our Savior. Uh, so let's listen for God speaking to us through his holy word, uh, through Isaiah 64, starting in verse 1. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence as fire causes wood to burn and water to boil. Your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. When you came down long ago, you 
gift awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you, who works for those who wait for you. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. But you've been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they're nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls in your name or thinks of you from mercy. Therefore, you turned away from us and turned us over to our sin. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the heart. We are all formed by your hand. Don't be angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. Amen. From here we turn uh, to the Gospel according to Mark, Chapter 13, starting at verse 24. This is going to sound like a strange reading to start to read into Christmas. Uh, Mark chapter 13, verses 1 to 23, is disaster after disaster. It's Jesus predicting uh, the destruction of the temple, the destruction of Jerusalem. It's bad times. And we join in at verse uh, 24. At that time, said Jesus. After the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory, and he'll send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that the summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard. Stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return, in the <coughs> evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone. Watch for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, move with power on these words that we've just read, that they can comfort us and challenge us, and that we can be strengthened as your people. Help me to preach with uh, faithfulness and love and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was a child, I needed stitches three times in the exact same spot on my forehead. And the last of them was the most embarrassing. Uh, I was uh, just out front of my old school. I think I was in grade three. I'm not 100% sure. And I walked into a post. 
just bright white post, middle of the day. I walked into a post. I was saying goodbye to some friends and just turned around, bam. And uh, my first thought, of course, was, did anyone see that? And I ran inside the school, and then my second thought was, poured water all over my head. It wasn't water. Um, and I tell you this story at the start of the sermon, not to communicate your pastor is a big clumsy goof, true as that may be, um, but as an illustration of, we so often miss what's right in front of us. <laughs> right? I walked into a post and needed, I think, three stitches. But you probably know what I mean when I say we miss what's right in front of our face sometimes. Um, and uh, it happens physically, like a kind of funny example. Has ever, anyone ever been asked, can you get the mustard from the fridge? And you go and stand with the door of the fridge open. And then the person who asked you gets impatient, walks up and pulls it from right in front of your face. Please tell me I'm not the only one. Right? But I'm going to get a little more serious now, because it happens physically that we don't do this. It also happens emotionally. Have you ever said the words, I had no idea they were going through that? Right? Your closest friend is in a crisis, and you didn't know. We miss what's going on right in front of our face. With strangers, right? Like, man, that lady at the store was rude. Her dad's on. Uh, you know, like, but even with our own family and our own friends, we miss what's happening. We miss the joy and the pain. And the consequences of that can be a lot more serious than three stitches in your forehead. And if it happens on that small level, it also happens on a big social level, right? Um, we miss what's going on right around us. And here, here's the creepy thing. I think there's a whole industry to help us ignore what's going on in front of our face, right? Like, for some reason, is there a big virus around us is a political question. Like, does that make sense to anyone? Um, but it is, like, no, it's just not happening. You're, you're making it up is a big story in the world today. And the consequences of that are awful. Um, you know, oh, the, don't worry about plastic in the oceans or that the atmosphere is getting warmer. It's all fake. We don't see what's in front of our face. And uh, can I say that those ones, I think it's because we don't want to. We deny what's happening right in front of us. And the consequences of that are a lot more serious than three stitches in your forehead. And if it happens physically and emotionally and on big social levels, how much more does it happen spiritually? I mean, if we live in a world where there's powerful people trying to make us ignore what's in front of our face, we also live in a society that increasingly says that there's no such thing as the spiritual world. We deny like, the core aspect of reality that's right in front of us. We don't see because we, we choose not to. We miss what's going on. And if there's a uh, if there's one thing that Advent is about, it's a season of, of preparation, right? The big day is Christmas, and Advent is leading up to it. Um, the season of preparation is basically, hey, something big is coming, don't miss this. And we, you know, light a candle each week. Did anyone as a kid open the little doors on a calendar, that kind of thing? We do these countdowns because it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and you don't want to miss it. That's true of one, you know, holiday, but it's so much more true of the spiritual side. The Lord is coming. Let's notice. Let's look and see. Getting ready for this sermon, it wasn't, it wasn't until very recently that 
the, what I've given as the title, Then Everyone Will See, jumped out at me as a key of the passage. You know, Jesus is talking about disaster after disaster, and hey, it's 2020, we can sympathize, right? Um, but then he says, then everyone will see. Um, God does move in mysterious ways that can surprise us. But he is actually available to see. You know, the first hymn we sang, O Come, O Come, Im Manu Eil, With Us God. It's one of the names of Jesus. Emmanuel is God with us. He's arrived. And this Sunday in Advent is the Sunday of hope. That's the candle of hope that we've lit, uh, we lit this Sunday as a symbol. But, okay, there's a right answer to this question. Is hope something that we look backwards to? <laughs> Very clearly, hope is a word on the future. And Christmas happened 2,000 years ago, right? I know it's, it's the end of November, and you can say Christmas is December 25th coming up. That's not Christmas. That's our celebration of Christmas. Christmas, the, the incarnation of the Lord on earth, happened, past tense, right? Jesus came. Part of our celebration, part of our getting ready to celebrate that again, isn't looking back. And we will, you know, set up a little crash and figures in your house, put little figurines of baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph. It all happened. God kept his promise then. But the point of it is to look forward. The Lord has come, and the Lord will come again. Advent is a season of looking forward and noticing what God will do, but also just what God is already doing. Let's open our eyes, our ears, and most importantly of all, our hearts and souls and minds. Because God is available. Now there's a passage here I find really challenging, and I'm just going to roll with that. I'm not going to try to make it easy on myself or you, okay? Um, because Jesus here uses an image that says, look, this is really obvious. And I don't find it obvious. I find I have to, I have to work to notice what God is doing. But Jesus here uses the image, it's like you look at a fig tree and see the leaves are spreading, and you know that spring is around the corner, right? How complicated is that? that uh, I know we're well away from it now, but you know that moment when you start to see green fuzz on the edge of trees? Does anyone else get really excited by that every single year? Um, am I being a genius that I know that means that summer's on its way? No! It happens all the time, right? It's easy to spot. Jesus here says, just like that. You should know that when these things happen, the Lord is on the way. I don't find it that easy. So I'm going to take this as a challenge for myself, and I guess I'm inviting you to do the same. If Jesus says we can look and see, then let's try it. Let's look for what God is doing all around us already. He says it's clear if we just watch. And I don't, I don't really want to miss another post and get stitches again. <laughs> right? You heal a lot faster when you're a kid. But uh, even more, I don't want to miss what's right in front of me, what's right in front of my face, of what God is doing next. We live in a world that's pretty obsessed with doom and gloom right now. Has anyone else had to like explicitly change the way you consume the news over the last year? Right? I have had to make decisions about uh, no, I will not 
keep checking at this time. I will read because it's important for me to know what's going on, but I'm not going to watch any news. I'm going to read it, right, for my own sanity. Because, man, um, it's funny. I feel like this year, just the number 2020 has become a square word, <laughs> right? Um, but doom and gloom is all around us. And I'm not saying ignore it. We shouldn't. Um, in fact, the first verse of what we read is literal doom and gloom, right? The very first thing we read today was, the sun will be darkened. There you go. Right? The moon will stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavens will be, the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Uh, it, have you ever heard anything that sounds more dewy or gloomy? But here again, the word, just the word that Jesus says next. The sun will stop shining, the moon will go out, the stars will fall from the sky, heaven will be shaken. Then, then, I mean, we're running around going, it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. If the sun goes out, that really sounds like the end of the world. That, you know, our Christian word for something being shown to us, revelation, apocalypse, has come to mean the end of the world. But is that what the Bible teaches? No. Everything is bad, says Jesus, it's really happening. And then, and that word by itself is hope. Yes, things are bad, but then everyone will see. And what they're going to see is, uh, don't ignore that either, what we're going to see is Jesus. Right? The Son of Man is, what Jesus, is how Jesus talks about himself when he's returning. Uh, it's an image from the Old Testament prophets, especially the book of Daniel, that Jesus uses very regularly. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming in his glory, and he'll send out his angels and gather up his own. <coughs> Doom and gloom happens, but it's not the end. It's not where we stay. God is already at work. And the end of the story, just like this present moment of the story, belongs to God. Don't stop at the bad news. Don't ignore the bad news, but definitely don't stop there. God's love and goodness are already at work not just in the future kingdom of heaven, but right now. He's already at work. And all we have to do is, well, close your eyes for a moment and open them. And if you look around in this room, what you see are people made in the image of God. Um, you can look across the room and see someone that God is crazy for and loves and decided to die for. That's who's sitting beside you. That's also who's where you're sitting. That's you too. God is already at work. <coughs> and so we just need to remember and watch. We have a lot of traditions around Christmas. Some of them, sure, I can rail against the commercialization of taking Jesus out and, and all that. But can I be honest, most of our traditions around Christmas are pretty great. Like, can we just say Christmas is fantastic and lovely <laughs> um, and not get all upset about all these things? It's great that we get to cover our house in lights. It's great that we get to put things under the tree. It's fun. Let's enjoy it. And this year, a lot of that's going to be taken away from you. And am I allowed to say that sucks from the pulpit? Because <laughs> that sucks. It sucks what we're going to lose this Christmas. I get a huge amount of strength from all the hugs I get at the end of December. I mean, and I want them. And I'm not going to get them this year. It's going to be taken away. But here's an image that helps. I'll go back to that thing. 
When the branches are bare, you can see farther in the forest. Right? And this year, not by choice, but because we have to. We can focus more on what's really going on. The story of Christmas is that God shows up. Im Anuel, God with us. He comes to this world. He did it in the past. He'll do it in the future. And by his Holy Spirit, he's still our Emmanuel, God with us. Now. So as we lose things this Christmas, it's another chance to find the heart of it all. To find God in the middle of it. Jesus ends this chapter of the Bible with this story of um, servants watching for their master to come home. Uh, and I'll, I'll flip it around slightly, because uh, it's a prep for Christmas. Did anyone else as a kid find it hard to fall asleep on December 24th? Can you still remember that feeling in your, I was going to say guts, but I felt more in my ribs. I don't know. That feeling of like, oh boy, I can't wait, I can't wait. Christmas is coming, Christmas is coming. What time is it? Can I go wake up my parents yet? <laughs> right? Do you remember in your bones that excitement? That's what Jesus is calling to, calling us to. About a present, a lot better than whatever you can stick under a tree. Watch, he says, like a watchman waiting for their master to come home. And can I throw in watch, like a kid, ready for that morning? Watch for God to show up in your life, in this world. Open your eyes. Open your soul. The Lord is near. Amen. Our hymn of response is one that uh, works through the four Sundays of Advent that we'll be uh, going through. Hope is a star.
Lord, we come to you each week, we come to you each day with prayers, with things that we need, um, with situations we're desperate for your help in. But first we have to come and say thank you. Because there's nothing we can ask you that you don't already know. There's nothing uh, in this world where you're not already present. So Lord, we do come with needs, we do come with fears, we do come with hopes. But first we come with thanks. That you are here and that you show it. Thank you for uh, your beauty and love that is already all around us. In this world we've created, in each other, even in ourselves. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that makes, makes things shine with your love. Thank you that you have been our Emmanuel, God with us, on joyful days of celebration. Uh, thank you that you have been our Emmanuel, God with us, on days of confusion and pain. God, you have been faithful. So we say thank you. And from that place of thanks, we do cry out for help. Not, Lord, that you will come for the first time, but, Lord, that you will show yourself. Um, show yourself in people's lives that are sick. Bring healing and strength. Show yourselves in people's lives uh, that are lost and confused. Especially these days, we pray for the lonely and the isolated. Show yourself uh, in our city, in our province. Show yourself in our nation. Lord, show yourself in the decisions of the powerful. Um, we pray especially today for um, Ethiopia and Armenia and the damage to the wars there. But so many other places, God. Um, oh, they would come down and the nations, the mighty, would know that you are God. Lord, we pray for the weak and the poor. Show your love. Show your power. May we leave here with, with open eyes, ready and eager to see what you will do and what you are doing. This we pray in the name of our Amen, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Closing song today is All the Earth is Waiting.